Hi, Mikael. It's, um, it's been three long months since you last played a Premier League match. What are your emotions and those of your players going into this game at the Etihad on Wednesday night? Well, first of all, I hope everybody is there. I cannot see anybody, but I hope you guys are well. I miss you a lot. Um, yeah, it's been a long process. Uh, we've been uh, through very different stages, but now we are really excited. We are back doing what we want to do. Hopefully, you know, we can do it in the right way and we can sustain it. So it's really important that now everybody does what is required. You said the idea that you would have had six weeks build up to the first game. Instead, it's been, been more like four. So what have you had to prioritise and what's been the balance between the fitness work and maybe the work that you do on, on tactics and style of play? No, we need to know to, to get to this way of working with all the limitation we have try to make the most out of it. I think we found the right balance. And the most important thing was to provide the players a safe environment to work where they could feel that uh, there was no risk or very, very limited risk for them to develop their profession. I think we have managed to do that. And from now on, yeah, the physical part of it is really good, but the mental side as well, it's been a challenge all those three months. And, uh, and now how, let's see how ready we are to compete. And just the last one for me, really. Is it, can you give us an update on the fitness of the squad heading into Wednesday night's game? Yeah, so far, uh, everybody's OK. We'll see how training goes tomorrow to pick the right team and the right squad. Again, it's going to be different with the amount of substitutes that we can have on the bench and the amount of substitution that we can do. So we have to think about um, how can we do that. Uh, Mikel, what will it be like for you to go up against Pep? Guardiola, what sort of influence has he been on you, both as a football coach and as a person? Well, he was an influence for me since I was 15 years old and, um, and we met in Barcelona, both as, as a player. And then obviously in my coaching career and in my personal life, he has an enormous influence. Um, if I have to talk about the person, who he is, his values, the way he's treated me and, and how he deals with the players and, and the staff around him, it's, it's phenomenal. And as a coach, yeah, I've learned so much from him. We spent some amazing moments together, some difficult ones as well. But uh, the experience next to him has been in incredible. I'm sure there'll be a bit more on him later, but I just wanted to ask you about... Um, Pierre Obama, uh, Emmerich Aubameyang as well. The comments that he said, he says a decision uh, to sign a new contract is the most important of his career. What, what have you said to him about committing uh, to the long-term project that you've got at the club? Well, I think it's our responsibility to make him feel that this is the right next step in his career. In order to do that, he needs to feel valued. I think he needs to feel that he belongs to us and we want him. And then he really needs to believe that uh, we can take this club forward the way we want to do. And he's going to be a key player to do that. I think at the moment, I'm extremely happy with uh, how he's been performing and behaving. I think I've got a, a really good relationship with him when we can discuss face to face a lot of things. And um, so far, as I'm aware, I think he's very happy at the club. And just as a quick follow up to that, he said that Arsenal know why nothing has happened yet? What, what is the reason behind it? And, and, and are you concerned that he, he's sort of saying all of this in, in, in public so close to the, the restart? Well, I think in a different context, um, we would have liked to do the things much quicker. But obviously, we have been handed really tight with time and, and, and communication as well. And obviously, these unprecedented times brings a lot of uncertainty. And these are getting clear and clear every day that we are a step closer to get back playing football and, um, and we're going to move forward. Just going back to those games against Charlton and, and Brentford, what aspects from those games were you most pleased about and what aspects do you feel that your team can improve on? Well, it was a really nice practice for us to get a little bit of a feeling and what it is to compete again uh, in a match, how it feels to play without any crowds, um, the protocols that we have to go through in order to be in, in a good, safe environment to compete as well. And then, yes, physically, we didn't play a game of football for over three months. And uh, we wanted to get the players 
some minutes. We managed to do that without any injuries. So um, it was both a really positive test. And uh, just a quick question on Eddie and Ketia, because before the suspension, he was scoring, really beginning to find his feet in this side. And of course, he scored twice against Charlton as well. How much will you be relying on him for these final games to help with the goal scoring load? Yeah, we treat Eddie as a, an important part of our squad. Uh, we had to make a very important decision not to let him go on, on loan again after the spell he had at Leeds. I watched him train and I was very convinced that he's the right player for us to move us into the next level, that uh, he can contribute in a big way to the way we want to play. And, uh, and he's been fantastic so far. Um, I first want to ask you about Roy Hodgson's comments today where he said that this whole um, expanded squads and five substitutes might give clubs a chance to blood more young talent. Now, you've already given lots of young talent um, a chance at Arsenal. Do you, do you believe that having an expanded bench and, and five substitutions will, 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 might see even more young players come through in the next five or six weeks? I think it will happen and I will as well. Uh, for example, in our case, we have five games in 15 days, but that's a game every three days. We don't know how the players are going to respond physically because they have a really short preparation and um, there are a hundred minute games now, the way we're going to play. So uh, yeah, we have to use them. We'll use them. We have some really talented young boys that um, they're asking for chances and I'm sure all the club, the situation will be the same. And uh, I think we'll be at some stage forced to use some of them with the amount of games that we're going to be playing in, in that sort of space of time. My second question was, well, what have you personally learned from the restart in Germany where uh, we've seen home advantage really doesn't count for very much with no supporters in the stadium, but also maybe a few injuries. And, and then over the weekend, um, Italy and Spain. What have you, what have you learned from, from those restarts that you can implement at Arsenal? I watch uh, some aspects that uh, we can take some advantage of, but I think you have to experience it. And we could, I could watch the games in the Bundesliga, but then when I was at the Emirates, and there is no crowd and you cannot feel that energy and that push and that drive. Yeah, the game is different. The intensity drops a little bit. I think, again, the physical state of the players is not as it was three months ago. So you can sense that as well. And that uh, urgency doesn't exist no more from the crowd and how passionate the, the crowds are in England. But uh, we have to adapt to it. But I think we have to experience it, find ways to motivate our players as well in, in moments. and. Um, and let's see how it goes. It's been a three-month break. Arsenal were unbeaten domestically before in, in 2020. Do you, do you think this, this break will disrupt that progress? Or do you think there's a benefit because you'll have players coming back fit, uh, although other clubs will as well? Well, I hope it doesn't. Uh, we've been working on that uh, to try to maintain, or if we can obviously improve the level that we were playing before and improve the results as well. So. Um, yeah, there are some uncertainties that we don't know how we're going to respond to. But uh, what I can tell you that we have been doing as much as possible uh, to try to get into this moment with the best possible chance. And of course, the big prize for the end of the season for Arsenal would be the uh, qualifying for the Champions League. Do you think that's, that's something that could help um, persuade Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang to stay? And, and has there been any discussion about a new contract so far? I think that will help to persuade anybody, but we are very lucky to have the club that we have right behind us, that a lot of players want to come and join us. But it's not about who do we want to attract as well, it's how happy the players that are here and how convinced they are that they are the right place. And as well, because it's our obligation almost to be fighting for every trophy and playing the Champions League with this club. And just, sorry, on that final point, do you know if there's been any discussion about a new contract for him yet? We have many discussions with um, Pierre, his family and his agent, and, uh, and I'm pretty positive that uh, we can find the, the right agreement with, for all parties. Yeah, hi, Mika, buenas tardes. Um, yeah. So I wanted to ask you, with regards to this fixture against Man City, when you came into the Emirates uh, for this reverse fixture in another role and you sensed the down mood that you talked about that day and what you inherited there was a remarkable upturn and we saw you just narrowly lose to Chelsea in the first home game at the Emirates 
Um, to build onto that, we saw the results improving. And of course, with lockdown, that's taken a, an effect. How difficult will it be to try to get back into the groove that you're experiencing? And, and how have the players been up for this challenge? Well, it's been a challenge for all of us. It's been a challenge since they joined, uh, the day I joined this club um, because of the situation that we were in. But um, I think we made a lot of uh, steps forward and um, we tried to change the energy that we had around the place, even our stadium with the players, with the staff as well. And I was very positive in the way we were developing things. Um, obviously, we had a, a big turning point with the coronavirus and being three months away from each other. But uh, we've been trying to keep going in our direction, closing the contact and communication with our players and our staff. And I think we are in a really good position to move forward. We have some uncertainties that we cannot control and we don't know how the players are going to respond playing now every three days after three months. But uh, most of the clubs are in the same position. We we'll try to adapt, make the most out of it. Don't try to find any excuses and, and go for it and enjoy because I think we are missing football so much that uh, we are desperate to get back playing. You denied a pre-season with Arsenal, of course. Is the time that you've had now a sort of a pre-season to try to get across your philosophy uh, and, and or is that just doesn't come into the equation? It wasn't exactly a pre-season but uh, because I, I didn't have the players for six weeks but uh, we tried to use everything we could. If you ask me what have you learned most, it probably has been using different ways of communicating, um, using technology is one of them and as well in my, from my side it's hard to communicate with players and talk to them and try to get into them as well without touching them, without seeing them. So that's been a challenge, but uh, we've been trying to do everything we could to help them, to help them to understand better what we are trying to do, to convince them that it's the right way for them to enjoy their profession. And, uh, and let's see, let's see if we've done a good job or, or not. You've obviously mentioned there that you're uh, pretty positive um, that, that Pierre will Will, will stay. He's not the only um, player with a contract to be sorted. Is there any news on Bakayo Saka's future and his contract? Well, we are trying as a club um, to finalise the deal that are more urgent and they are a priority for us. The ones that you are talking, they are both really important, not for now, but for the future of the club as well. And, and the club has something to announce, um, they will do it in the right moment. Um, you spoke about giving uh, the youngsters their uh, their chances, their their opportunities. Do you think that, that they can, you know, the point they have to prove can can spur you forward over the coming weeks? The the desire to make a big impact. Uh, they have to keep development, and um, one of the biggest challenges always there is consistency. So they've been doing it for a certain period of time for certain moments of certain games, but to do it consistently every three days for 94, 96 minutes, that's a different story. And in order to do that and develop the right way, they need the right players next to them with the right mentality, with the right qualities, and with the right drive. And, um, and that's what we have to do. We have to give them the right foundation around them for them in order to, to feel free to develop, you know, without the extra pressure that they don't need in this moment and they cannot carry on and don't give them too much responsibility too early because there is always a risk to burn them. Uh, just finally from me, you come in, if your first uh, away game at Manchester City, how important is it for you to, to stick to the principles that you've established uh, as, your, as Arsenal head coach when you go away to these top teams? Uh, we have to take every game the same way, to go there and, and win the game. We know that every stadium and every opponent is completely different. I have to focus and I have to try to convince my player to focus on what we have to do. We cannot control everything that Man City does. It's impossible if we want and I will drive the players mad in order to do that. So I just try to convince them what we can do to try to beat them, what's their best plan possible for us to have the best possible chance to compete in that game and win it. And, uh, and let's see how much we are able to do that. Because here it's easy, but to go there on the pitch and, and show it for 96 minutes.